Hey friends, this is Fel. Today, I wanted to help you get started in Monster Hunter Rise by giving you this guide to your first hour in the game, while trying to break down some of the information overload or things I feel it doesn't explain as well as it could. So whether you're coming from old gen and you skipped world, just need a refresher, or you're still trying to convert your friends to Monster Hunter, this guide's for you. We're going to start with the character crew. Just a couple things here, we're mostly going to gloss over it. You have Type 1 and Type 2 body. Both of these do have access to every armor in the game. However, some of them are aesthetically different, and a few of them do have different names. We're just going to go with Type 1 and got all your hair to choose from. We're just going to gloss over this. This guy, his name, it's 1. I believe in GU it was uh, Q. Now this, this is the Palamutes. These are our new canine friends introduced in Monster Hunter Rise. You can ride around on them. Uh, they are the dog equivalent of a Palico. They're really fun. His name, also one. And this is our Palico. You're familiar with them. One thing that is different in this game compared to, say, World, is we do have the GU support types back. No Prowler mode, though. Uh, just have a flick through these and see which one you might like more. We're going to go with Gathering for this one because they pick things up for you and it's really helpful. And its name, you guessed it, one. Don't worry too much if you didn't make uh, a buddy that you were too happy with there. You do get multiples and you can make multiple support types. It's no problem at all. We're going to be co covering a lot of things in this, so... Sit down, and I am going to index it all, so don't worry too much if you just need one part of the guide. We're going to be skipping through all of the cutscenes, all of the dialogue, but I do recommend you read the tutorials. I recommend that you watch the cutscenes, because they are all a lot of fun. This game's aesthetic is set in a traditional Japanese village, which we haven't seen since Monster Hunter Portable 3rd on the PSP, or PS3 if you had access to a Japanese copy of it. But right now, we're just going to walk around the village. Right now, they're telling us we can move around and we can run by holding R. Pretty standard stuff. This is our friend Kagero the Merchant. He works effectively like the village uh, markets do in the old games. He sells us all kinds of things like uh, potions and bullets. All kinds of stuff. This is the smithy Harmon. Uh, if you're not familiar with Monster Hunter Smithies, this is where you're going to create your weapons and armor. AKA, the crux of the game. The draw point. Other than the hunts, of course. They do a pretty good job of tutorializing it, though. They're now telling us we can use wire bugs, which is a new feature here, just to get around the village a little bit quicker. You do also have the ability to fast travel by holding in the minus button on your switch, but you don't unlock that until a little bit later. This is your Mogi, the chef. In Monster Hunter games, you do have to eat before every hunt. They give you health and stamina buffs, as well as some unique abilities that you can only get by eating. Right now, we're getting our first weapon, which for this game, very fittingly, is the longsword, which we're going to stick with for this guide, so we can live our weeaboo dreams. We now have to go to the Gathering Hub to become a fully-fledged hunter. In this game, if you are just coming from world, there is a distinction between multiplayer and single player quests. To unlock multiplayer quests or access them, you come to this gathering hub here and you talk to this hub maiden, Minato. But we are going to go over the gathering hub a little bit later. Right now, we're going to talk to this absolute thirst trap of a man, Master Utsushi. He just wants us to take a picture of him. He's explaining to us the action bar, which is a new feature in this game, accessible by the D-pad. Uh, it gives you a few different options. You can do cool poses, which I'll show you how to access more of them later. A greeting, which is a gesture. A sticker. A custom shout-out, which you can customize yourself. And a camera, which is what he wants us to use. So we just need to take a little photo of him. Capcom clearly knew he was handsome. And talk to him. He also gives you arena quests, which are a unique kind of quest that gives you certain equipment to utilize throughout the hunt. But they're really fun. We can also ride our Palamute here now, which is kind of their whole thing in this game. But we don't need to do that right now. 
Right now we just need to talk to Hinoa, the other quest maiden. This is for your single player quests. And I would recommend doing these. They are a bit easier. It's uh, it's good. This is Kahoot, our new owl friend. He doesn't really do too much. He does something, but we'll show that later. His name, we're just going to spare him and call him Kahoot. But you can dress him up. He's, he's basically this game's Poogie. Your little pig friend. Now we're having pedal aces explained to us. We're going to quickly go to the equipment box and I'm going to show you them all. Now, I'm not going to cover every single weapon in this game. I did that at the beginning of my GU guide. But for now, we're just going to accept our first quest, which is the, the basics of the game. Master Otsushi is going to tell us effectively how to move around and what we can do here. But first, optional subquests. By picking these, you can effectively get extra rewards by doing very little extra. So we have gathering quests for picking up bones, insects, and mushrooms. Don't worry too much about that. Right now we're just going to pick one and hope that it sticks. But you also have hunting, which is for hunting monsters. Slaying, which is for hunting small monsters. Wyvern riding, which is this game's new mounting system. Uh, you ride around on the monster and you can bonk it into walls and stuff. We're going to demonstrate all of this later. Don't worry too much now. And we're also going to take quests in the Shrine Ruins. As you can see, it gives us Kamara points, which are just another currency in this game other than money or zenny. Armor spheres, which are used for upgrading your armor. And Twisted Remains, which are a unique crafting material. Now, we're going to accept back to basics. We're just going to gloss over this. But for now, if you guys are absolutely dying to get online or skip all of this crap and you want to hear me stop talking, uh, we can talk to Senri the Mailman. Come over here and telling us how to do online and offline stuff. So, you just hit play online. Find a lobby or create a lobby. Uh, you can put a passcode in. We'll just quickly make a lobby, it doesn't matter. I doubt anyone's going to join. And if you just want to get online and start playing with friends straight away, I'll show you how you can do that too. So as you saw, we punched in a passcode of 2580. We also have lobby settings, which is going to give us that lobby ID, which is right under our passcode there. Just give that to your friends. They can punch it in. You'll be playing with them in no time flat. He also gives us all of your add-on content if you happen to get the DLC. Now, onto our equipment box. In here, we have our items. This will have all of your monster parts plus all of your buff items. So right now we have potions, which are your healing items, antidotes for curing poison, rations, which increase your stamina, raw meat, and files, which are a bow item. And in here you still have a couple of potions and antidotes that the game just gives you. So you might as well take some there. If you're dare dying to change your weapons straight away, you can come to here and pick one of 14 weapons. Just off the bat, if I was going to suggest three for a newcomer. Longsword is really fun. Uh, high counter value does a lot of damage in this game. It's really fun. And you can live your weeaboo dreams. Sword and shield, which is my personal favorite weapon, because who doesn't like the Dark Souls game? And honestly, I'm going to suggest Hunting Horn as the other beginner weapon. It's not quite as difficult as it is in the old games, but you get to buff your friends. Uh, some of them can heal, all while bonking the monster on the head and playing songs. It's really fun. Petal Aces. These are the new items to this game. You will unlock them as time goes on, but they all have different stats. But for right now, we're going to do our due diligence, go and eat a meal, learn a little bit about food skills, and uh, do our first hunt. So, you can pay with money or points, order the bunny dango. We're going to take dango calculator, which increases the number of camera points you receive at the end of a quest. We're also going to take dango polisher, because it's not so relevant for now. And why not Dango Defender? Now, unlike other games, you get to pick these three ingredients and they'll give you unique abilities. If you think that this is a particularly good setup, you can just register it to a set and you can pick that every single time. But for right now, we're just going to order it. And you might think I'm a monster for skipping the song, but 
Honestly, it's best you experience it yourself. That's how I'm going to get you to buy this game. And uh, off on our first time we go, we actually need to accept it first. Accept this quest, and off we go. You can just take it by hitting ZR and depart on quest. And this will be your first quest in this game. There will be a few before you get to do hunting of big monsters, but don't worry about it too much. It all explains things pretty perfectly, and I hope you enjoy them. We are going to skip this as well. You should watch it. They're really lovely. They kind of remind me of old Kurosawa films. Now, Thirst Trap's telling us what to do again. Go talk to him. But we are just going to gloss over this. He's telling us about the camp, tent, and the supply box. Now, if you forgot to eat, or you're not happy with the items you brought, or you forgot to bring potions or something, if you come into this tent, you got your item box here. Uh, crafting list here. Which you can use to make new stuff via uh, items you find in the field. Uh, equipment, in case you need to change. And if you forgot to eat, you need a meal here. Now, it's worth you always checking the supply box at the very beginning of your hunts. Because they give you free first aid meds and free rations at the beginning. Isn't that fantastic? Now, as you can see, up in the top left corner, we have our health bar, which is the green one, and our stamina bar, which is the yellow one. Now, we have a little bit of red and a little bit of gray on both. Red on stamina can be increased by eating rations or well-done steaks. So we're just going to fill that up to full. And gray can be increased by finding little birds that go into your new petal ace and uh, give you a permanent buff for the rest of the hunt. And you can choose whether or not to get those. We're just picking up herbs, which we can use to make potions. And we're making use of the wire bug here, which we're about to be told how to use anyway. So, we utilize the wire bug by holding uh, ZL. And going upwards. And we can also run up walls and stuff with that. I'll, I'll quickly show that later. He's now explaining to us that we can ride on our uh, Palamute to uh, zoom around. Or, if they're being disobedient, we go down to that action bar we were using earlier, and we hit up on Let Me Ride. Now, a few things about the Palamute. If you hold R to dash, like you were doing before while you were just on foot, and then holding ZL, you can uh, Tokyo Drift around corners, and you can also get a, a nice little speed boost. You can also gather from the dog itself. Now, these are the little birds we were talking about before. This one happens to give you extra stamina when you pick it up. And that's a cloth fly, which gives us a small defense buff. So, if you see, our uh, stamina went up a little bit there. And we come here, get that. We also now have a little defense buff. Back to Master and Sushi. He kind of just gives us a walk through the shrine ruins here. We can also summon our Palamute from anywhere that we like, provided they're feeling cooperative, by holding A. But we're going to ride over here and look at our first small monsters. These are called Izuchi. They're small, they have knives for tails. Pretty fun. This is just sort of to get you used to hitting things with your weapon. I'm going to show you some more efficient ways to practice uh, with your weapon a little bit later on. But that's just to give you a little bit taste of the combat. If you so choose, you can carve them up and take their materials. We're going to do so. And hope for a couple of hides, a couple of pelts. Oh, nice, a tail. And every time you get a new material, it'll show up on the right-hand side with that, with that little exclamation point. We're also going to pick up some honey, which we use to create mega potions. And this small wire bug here, which gives you an additional slot on your wire bug usage. So you can use three in a row now. Back to Master at Sushi. And he's now going to tell us how we can fast travel here, back to our camp. 
which is not something you can do in the old game without far casters. But we're going to be covering a lot with all of this. And that's effectively your first quest in Monster Hunter Rise done. A nice easy little tutorial. And now, out into the field as a, as a hunter. At the end of every quest, depending on the one, you either have 20 or 60 seconds before the hunt ends. So, you can use that time to run around, gather, mess about on your wire bugs a little bit, catch your dog. Which you actually can do. Provided you do it in time. And then we also get the rewards at the very end. So this one just gave us a raw meat, which we're actually going to use a ration potion, or rations, more raw meat, or twisted remains. That only took about three minutes. Nice and quick. Now, we are about to be given a villager request by Fugan himself, the big chief, the big cheese. I'm going to show you how to complete that. So, this is also now a good time to educate you about the different speech bubbles that appear above people heads, people's heads. So, blue means we get a villager request, which means that they want us to do something. They want us to do a task out in the field, or they want us to deliver something. Right now, Fugan wants a well done steak, the reward being some potions. We can just give that to him fairly simply. And if you want to keep track of those, if you can't remember for some reason, come into this menu here, down to side quests, and requests. We're going to be covering Pretty much all of that pause menu, because I think Monster Hunter might be one of the very few games in which you need to explain the pause menu. It can be a bit daunting at times. So, we're going to come down here and learn about motley mixing, which is how you cook raw meat in this game. So we come here, hit motley mix, and we can make raw done steak out of our well done steaks. You can also do this with some monster parts. You can choose to pay with money or points. I'm going to pay with points because I don't have a lot of money right now. Thank you so much. And while we're walking back, I'll tell you what the other colors mean. So red, which appears above Minotaur and Hinoa, they are to progress the story of the game, both in the hub or otherwise. And yellow just typically means that someone wants to give you something or they want to tell you something important. But look at that. First quest already done. And we got 10 potions for it. And now we're just going to quickly jump onto our next set. But first. We take our village quest. There are also these training requests if you want to learn how to capture monsters or learn to ride them. I'm going to teach you how to ride uh, pretty simply here. We're going to take roly-poly lanterns. Now, this game actually made gathering quests fun. I didn't think they could do it, but they managed. But we're going to quickly talk to this guy first. Because he wants to give us something. He wants to give us things called the Great Wire Bugs. Which we're actually going to cover quite a lot in the next quest. So. We need to eat first, so we can get a little stamina buff. You don't have to eat before quests like this, but... Just for demonstration purposes, we're going to do so. Ah, and one thing I did forget to mention. After doing the motley mixes, if you do a certain amount of them, uh, Yumogi here will have a gift for you called a Dango Voucher. You can use those to increase the chances you get of skills activating on food. So look at that, we got six Dango tickets just for that. And now we're on our way. Departing on our second quest. This one is just to pick up some account items. Uh, we're going to be covering how you can look at the map here. Uh, and just use this as an opportunity to roam around and explore. Exploration has never been more fun in this game. The world does feel pretty open in a lot of ways. The areas feel big and fleshed out and they're, they're kind of fun. So, he's telling us that... On our mini-map, in the bottom left-hand corner, we can actually use those green dots to find what it is we're looking for. No more looking up on 
wikis on where every single item you need to find is. You can also uh, use this a lot more effectively. So if we open up our map and we hit X on the icon list, we have various things that we can find here. Unfortunately, there's not too much here that we can mark, but if you're looking for ore deposits or specific items that you've come across before, you can just hit A and it'll demonstrate it to you on this big map here. Unfortunately, it doesn't show you on the mini map unless you hold down L for your shortcuts, which zooms it in and it's now showing you it on the map. But that's not exactly the most interesting piece of information, is it? We're going to use this to find out our fire land. So we need to walk around these little red bushes here and get shimmering red berries. And you should just use this as a means to dart around the map and get used to using wire bugs. So right there, that was a ZL X. And then if you tap A afterwards, you hang in the air. It's really useful for when you're climbing up walls and stuff to regain your stamina. We can get on our dog and roam around. Don't forget you can grab items from the back of the dog. But as we can see, we don't have enough to find what it is that we're looking for here. So we're going to have to go up. Don't forget you can Tokyo Drift to go a little bit faster. Grab our spirit birds, etc, etc. Grab from this bone pile here, because I believe that was our, our gathering secondary quest. Well, cool. if we find six more of those, we finish that. You could fight these uh, small creatures here called Jagras. If you're so inclined. But it's worth just making your way up here, grabbing what you can, finding all of the items, learning where some of them are if you need to gather them. Let's climb up here, because there's some up here. If you wire bug into the wall there and hold R, you'll start running up it. Once you run out of stamina, your character automatically jumps off. If you tap A, you'll just hang out there, and then you can wire bug back onto the wall and start running around again. You can also use this to grab some extra HP buffs, some excite rooms, stink mink, which you can use to lure monsters to you. But aerial traversal is a lot of fun in this game. Unfortunately, we need to go find some more fire lanterns. But there are a couple more things that I'd like to show you here, so we're not going to jump into uh, any more before I show you those things. But coming up this way, Grab some thunder beetles and null berries. There's, there's a lot to grab here. But if you come to the back here, which is what I wanted to show you. You'll find these things called jewel lilies. So you remember those great wire bugs we picked up before? You can place them down and use them to go zooming around the map. One thing I didn't learn until relatively recently, 100 hours into the game, is if you look on this map here, if you see those little white dots with arrows coming off it, directly in front of our little red arrow, right up the top there. Those are jewel lily locations, which you can place great wire bugs. Uh, if you place them, they remain there permanently. The little orange one underneath us now is one that we have already placed. So, we're going to come up here. We're going to place another one. Just for fun. And we're going to jump down here place another one and use this one to get around a little more cool. also found a mining outcrop where we can get some iron ore there's some honey over there rock lizard which gives us some extra iron ore and what's this up here this is a thing called a relic record in every map, there's 10 of them, and they give you some extra lore on the, the location. And I, I really like that, I think that's super cool. The last location we're going to be heading to is the one over here. To unlock one final thing before finishing the quest. This is our subcamp. Once you do a small task for Kagero, we will have a new place to fast travel at the beginning of every quest, if you would like. But right now, provided we luck out, we got our last fire lantern. I would really recommend you run around and you explore the shrine ruins. It's a really, really nicely designed map. And hey, there's a really tall point. There might be something up there for you to find. But I really love the location design in this game. And I hope you have a lot of fun with it.
And look at that. An extra 20% points. We're going to quickly talk to Kagura. He's going to give us our quest for our subcamp. And then we're just going to get straight into the next quest, which will be a slaying quest on those little Jagras. So, he has a little blue thing above him, which means that he wants to, to do something for him. What does he want us to do? He wants us to slay eight Izuchi in the ruins. Now, you can just do this on the Jagra quest if you so choose. Just run around, go find them. Easy, easy. Ah, one thing that I should mention. You have to do a certain number of key quests to progress in this game. So these three here, with the little symbol to the left of them, those are key quests, ones that you need to do to progress. This one, Slay Izuchi. If you want, you can just do that to get the the quest done for the subcamps straight away. Wait, we however are not going to. So we're going to come over here and eat again. Again, sorry for being a monster and skipping the song. But I want you to experience it for yourself. That is how I will get you to buy this game. Now, slaying quests. They're a good way to get small materials that you might need. As well as getting used to the weapon you're choosing. Exploring. Doing all of this, these little things that add up. They're, they're really, really fun in Monster Hunter Rise. I didn't used to like slaying quests or gathering quests all that much. But exploration just feels so much fun. And like the gathering quest before. These are displayed as red dots on our map, so we can find them nice and easily just to do them. Grab some Nullberries, and get to Jagras murder. I'm not going to carve these ones. You can. Just going to quickly slay them and move on. Oop, there was two of them. I don't know where this guy is going. Nice and simple. We're going to find some nice concentrations of them. Some of them are up this hill right here. So, we're just gonna climb the wall. Get used to traversing this way. Get used to exploring in that way. And all the better we have three of them. Your buddies will actually go and kill some for you. Or they'll run away. And we'll miss a combo, because we're too far away. However, we are near something that I wanted to show you. If you're looking for little spirit birds, they do spawn in set locations throughout the map. Like, for instance, those two are always there. Or, you can come to these small green patches here. One slash. And we've already found another one that gives us a little defense boost. Oh, we just have a couple more Jagras to go and find. Only three left. But yeah, take these opportunities to just get used to using your wire bugs, to fiddling around with your weapon. And I haven't even shown you the wirebug attacks yet. We're going to do that on our next quest. Ah, we're just going to let that one escape. So this is an instance of our dog being a little bit slow on the uptake. So we hit let it ride and it'll just come to us. Sometimes they get a bit distracted doing whatever it is that they're doing. They get a mind of their own. But hitting that resets the AI so that you can get them to you straight away. Alright, that's our next quest done. Use this opportunity to have a little walk around, find some more resources. Given we have a whole 60 seconds in which to do it. Yeah, lots to explore. In fact, those little relic records I was talking about before. In 100 hours, I still haven't found all of them. Nice, a little earth crystal. Ah, these fellas. Given this game did away with mantles and 
the little vapor things from the previous game. This is your healing mist from that game. There's also a few of those in the form of toads or what have you. Yeah, just look around. I can't believe this game's on the Switch. It looks so good. Alright, and now we're on to our first large monster in the game. And it's a slightly more traditional one. And who oh boy, this loading screen. All of the art and new icons for this game, they all look fantastic. Oh, it seems we gotta go and talk to Yomogi about it. He has some terrible news. Ah, so she wants us to hunt a great Izuchi. We're just gonna quickly eat before we walk over there, save a little time. And this is largely what your gameplay in Monster Hunter is gonna look like. Hunting large monsters. They're all their own little boss fight. And it seems Kagero has something that he'd want to give us. And look, we did a few of those subquests. How helpful. Ooh, we're off on our way. He wants our artifact. We're going to be covering how you can access some of those just afterwards. But I think we're pretty good to go right now. A abrupt jump cut there. But uh, I didn't show off everything that I wanted to show off in that first hunt that we did on the, the Great Izuchi here. The only thing that you're really missing is that he had a little question mark where his icon was in the map down there. Uh, we're just going to go over the ebbs and flows of a, a large monster hunt. Killing big monsters to get better gear and getting better gear to kill big monsters. Uh, we're going to show off a little bit of a longsword combo, how to prepare. So while we're running the dog here, we eat a couple of rations. Uh, we go and get him going to be demonstrating wire bug attacks and just how combat will typically go. So start by getting a few hits off on him. Doing a combo, which is done by tapping ZR, which is to build meter for that white sword in the, the top left corner there. And then it will become yellow and then eventually red. Uh, this is a system unique to Longsword, uh, it's called Spirit Slashes and Spirit Gauge. It gives us passive damage buffs, and also allows us to do the Helm Splitter from World, if you're familiar, which unfortunately he jumped right out of the way of the highest damage one. This is done by pressing Z, L, and X, which is one of our wire bug attacks. And if you saw there, we did some blue damage to him, which is actually mountain damage in this game. So, if we do enough of that, we will actually be able to perform Wyvern Riding, which is a new and unique system to, to rise here. It's, it's a change for mounting. We also just got hit, so we can do Wirefall, which is this game's quick recovery, uh, unique to this game too, uh, which you're really going to want to learn to use, because some monsters, they have multi-hit combos, like one of them can just one-shot you if, you if you don't utilize it. So we get out of his way, we're just watching what he's doing. Fortunately, Izuchi has some pretty intuitive hits. So, if he swings his tail out wide, you can see that he's going to do a spin attack. And we just went down a sharpness gauge, which if you look in the top left corner, the little orange knife. Now, when we're hitting Izuchi, we're going to occasionally bounce off him, like that. Which is going to leave us wide open to attacks. So, what we're going to want to do here is either use spirit slashes only, how to reduce the damage. Or, we're going to get some space and uh, sharpen up by picking this whetstone item here. Watch what he's doing and quickly sharpen. You could also run away to a different area because as you can see, he's probably going to hit us here. We got lucky. So we're going to wire fall away. That's actually helpful. So now we have to pick our moment to heal. There's a lot of uh, little management systems you have to do for, for Monster Hunter and to be successful with it. We're going to try another wire bug attack here. 
trying to build up that mounting damage as much as possible, which can only be done from aerial attacks or from certain wire bug attacks, of which every weapon has two, two wire bug attacks. The second one for Longsword is, it's cool, but it's a bit not that useful given Longsword has quite a few counter attacks already, and this one is just another counter attack. But we're following him while he's running away. Monsters will do this pretty frequently, they'll go to different areas. So we're just gonna follow him on our dog. You can also sharpen on the back of the dog. So that was our second wire bug attack called Serene Pose. It also does mounting damage. And gave us a pretty fortunate knockdown. And now we're in the red. Which means we're at the highest damage value that we can currently be doing just off basic combos and stuff. But it does tick down very quickly. And also gives us the, the highest value on our Helm Skitter. Unfortunately, we still haven't gotten it into a mountable state. We've done quite a bit. So we're just going to run around and let it do, it do some attacks, get used to its movement. There we go. It's now in a mountable state. So you can either attack it, or you can just put away your weapon and tap A. From this position, you can actually use this to beat up other monsters, so it's pretty fun to go and grab one while you're on a hunt and beat up the monster you're actually hunting. Or, you can just ram them into a, uh, into a wall a couple of times uh, by pressing Y, launching the monster, and doing a little extra damage, getting a little knockdown, and it also locks them into position for a little bit, as you can see by the threads all around it, which means this guy's not going anywhere for a little bit. So we can sort of just go ham on him. Now he is into a, uh, a capturable state. So we could capture him if we wanted to, but we're gonna go for a full carve. And he probably wants to run away from us right now so that he can go to go to sleep. But he can't. So that's your first large monster hunt in Monster Hunter Rise done. Now the, all that's left is you carve him up and you, you take his flesh, take his skin for armor and wear it as a trophy. A little bit morbid, but hey, that's how it's going. There are also various part breaks you can do on a monster. Like if you can see here, we got one on his tail, as evidenced by the sort of white texture on it. But for a lot of monsters, you can actually cut pieces off them and get an extra carve out of them. And uh, that's really helpful for getting extra materials or just for bragging rights. For some monsters, it actually makes their reach a little bit less. So that kind of thing is really, really helpful. We can also use these extra 60 seconds a bit more effectively to go pick up some extra materials, but hey. Cool, that's your first... Large monster hunt done. Excellent. Back to Kamara Village. We also got lots of rewards. Also, breaking stuff gives us broken par rewards. And the first thing that you're gonna do after you fight every single monster, I imagine, is go and check what weapons and armor it can give you. So let's make some great Azuchi stuff, shall we? I'm sure he has a lovely longsword. This guy has another request for us. Kaguro has something he'd like to say to us. But let's talk to Hamon. So, he just gave us some armor spheres, which we can use to upgrade armor. But let's, uh, let's make a new weapon and go over the wish list and stuff. So, we want to make a new longsword. Let's look at what we have here. So, we could upgrade our sword that we presently have by looking at our, looking at what it is that we have just on this right hand side here, right beneath my, my goofy head. So, if you can see, if we were to upgrade this, we would get an attack value of 60, a sharpness bar of 
a little bit more yellow, no element, no affinity, no defense burn. Now, what does all of this mean? I would like to make the Azuchi weapon, which we can do in two ways in Rise. So we could make this bone sword here, which gives us 90 attack, which is quite nice with a little bit of yellow sharpness. And then we could upgrade it here because we have two different segments. If you look above any weapon that has that little hammer symbol in the top left corner, that means you can just forge it straight out. Other weapons, you need to follow these trees down. So to make whatever this is, we would have to make this serrated jaw first and then make that using upgrade materials. But we can just carve, uh, forge this one outright. And it's pretty good. 70 attack, a little bit of green sharpness, and 10% affinity. What does all of this mean? So attack value is pretty simple. It's a weapon's attack strength. Sharpness is actually very important because it dictates whether or not you're going to bounce off a monster. And also it has a very hidden attack multiplier. Affinity is just your critical hit chance. So not how much damage you're going to do off a critical hit. 10% affinity means that 10% of your hits are going to do critical hits, which is an additional 25% damage, which is really helpful. Slots, you won't start getting until a little bit later in the game, but that allows you to put decorations in most items. What decorations do is they give you skills. We're going to cover that in just a second. But for now, let's make this. Equip it, so we've got our new sword. Now we come down to armor. We come down to the Izuchi stuff. Unfortunately, we didn't get too much hide, so we can't make it very much, but we can make his nice helmet. And you can also preview how all of it looks. And it looks pretty snazzy. So, looking at this, the skills that this particular item is going to give us, it will give us a critical eye 1, which is an additional 5% affinity. Every piece of armor in this game is going to have a unique kind of ability setup that it gives you and it will be abilities versus slots but we're not going to cover that too much that's a bit too too in depth right now but for instance if we were to make this whole thing we would get plus 15 percent affinity which would for instance take our weapon up to 25 percent of our hits doing additional damage plus it gives us 10 defense for every single item as opposed to the one defense for every single item that's given us. So it's really worth upgrading and into whatever you can straight away. Even, and honestly, fighting the Great Azuchi a whole bunch of times, learning the fight, getting used to it, practicing a few different weapons, I would really, really highly recommend that. It's a, uh, it's super valuable. But for now, a helmet and a, an extra weapon, that's pretty nice. Now we're gonna come over here because we wanna make our buddy some stuff. You can kit your Palico and your Palamute out in armor from scraps that are made from you making weapons and stuff. So I believe we should have two Izuchi scraps. Three actually, because we made the weapon and the armor. So we can put our cat in some some new armor as well. And also give them a new weapon uh, to give them a little bit of extra damage. You can do that for the dog as well, but for right now we'll just give him a snazzy little... Uh, jumpsuit and that's pretty much how most of your experience with this game is going to go uh, for right now we're gonna we're gonna go check out that buddy plaza that we were we were looking at before that they told us to go to we never did and this is going to be imperative to you gaining extra resources slash learning how to deal with more of your buddies learning how to deal with uh, Palicos, Palamutes, as well as gaining more items throughout the game via a trader. But we're going to cover all of that really quick. We're just getting a nice little cutscene here. As well as, this is the access to the training area, which is going to be imperative to you learning about your weapon. So yep, we get to see it all. The first person we're going to come down and talk to is named Iori. So he kind of 
goes through all of this stuff, but we're going to explain it in a bit more detail. So, this is our buddy handler Iori. We could have come and visited him at the very beginning, but we're doing it. So, this allows you to hire more buddies, be they Palicros or Palamutes. They're all randomly generated, unless you do this scout a buddy, which you can make them look however you want. But for now, we're just going to hire uh, Gilbert. He seems pretty snazzy. We got a nice little cutscene. And... Robin. Just one of each. You can store up to quite a lot of them. So you can also rename them or dismiss them. So if you hire one that you don't like, you can just get rid of them straight away. No hard feelings. No big deal. Not a problem whatsoever. And then, what we're going to... Well, we'll just go clockwise. Counterclockwise. This is Kogarashi. We actually can't do anything with him right now, unfortunately. But he does allow you to send off some of your buddies to get additional resources. This, it's a secret. I'll never tell. But if we come back around to this tree, we get to see uh, our little friend. And he seems to have some goodies for us. If you check this every few hunts or so, you'll have a, a variety of uh, different items that you can find here. That's all for this side. We'll be coming back to that in just a sec. Now, this is Rondin the Trader. If you're familiar with the farm from Monster Hunter 3, or the the trader in GU, or the, the large tree, the botanist in World, this is exactly the same thing, with some slight differences here and there. So, typically at the start of every game, I start farming for honey like crazy, so that I can get as many mega potions as required. So we're gonna throw this down. Cool. Confirm, and we send out a submarine. You can unlock three of them, well, up to three. And if your buddies are leveled up enough, you can make them bargain for you a little bit quicker, get some extra items fast. But that's all we can do here for now. Bar getting some certain goods, so nets, gunpowder, etc. And occasionally they sell, they sell some really special stuff. But if you want sonic bombs or they sometimes sell traps, etc, etc, you can get heaps here. Now, up to the buddy board. This is sort of lost over a lot i feel so it's pretty important uh you can change your buddies out here so let's say we want to get rid of one and take robin on a quest instead we can do that we can just change right into that there you can also look at buddy skills now this it can be a bit daunting if you look at it at first but every single buddy that you have in the game, and you can check this before you hire them, has unique skills that you can equip via that skill memory thing. And if you'll see next to every single equipped skill, it has defense up, etc, etc. There is a single pip or a dot. Or for instance, next to Artful Dodger, there's two pips. You can equip, uh, say, one skill with one pip and one skill with two pips because those go right in the skill memories there. Some are better than others. And these are all really helpful. So your cat will increase your affinity or increase your defense or get rid of poison or uh, help you lock and defect, uh, defend attacks. Or rather, it does that for itself. Forgive me. But these are all really helpful and you can equip them a little bit later, but they need to level up a bit for instance this one is level five so we should be able to equip a couple for robin but uh yeah there we go we got three negate poison health up s attack up s you can also change the gear here so you can make various weapons and armors and you can also unlock techniques so one of the uh traders that we lost over before one of the requests they give you more of these and you can swap out either of these for one. So this is just a regular attack weapon. This one is, it latches onto the monster and causes it to attack them. But this one, also, it can heal itself. 
it can be hidden and it can uh it can throw explosive kunai so that's all really helpful to really just sort of look into if you're annoyed that your calicos are attacking the wrong things you can make them fight only small monsters or only large monsters via uh, the behavior there you can also change their weapons and armor which is what we were doing before so if we want to put them back in the regular camera hood we can do that now because our palicos are a little bit under leveled we can just come up here and talk to our shirube and put them in the buddy dojo so we can put many 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 of our, our guys in here and this is what you should be doing while you're sort of passively leveling buddies because this goes up while you're on hunts so let's put uh one or you can just auto select them and if you have these lagnia apples which you get from uh, the kahoot nests mostly um, this guy will be passively leveling up just while we're going on hunts and that's pretty much the buddy plaza it's it's very helpful the meow scenarios you'll unlock a little bit later on and that one's a bit more self-explanatory but for now, we're going to go to what I feel is one of the most undervalued things in the game, which is the training area. Just another quick cut, sorry. So the training area. You can use this to practice Monster Hunter's combat to your heart's content, learning pretty much everything about your weapon that you need to, except for how to react to individual monster attacks, and practice any other weapon that it is that you want to play with. The game gives you one of each. So, if you wanted to practice Greatsword, etc, etc, you can just pick one of these out and start going nuts with it. Can also use it to test out various builds as you progress in the game and you start getting more of those but yeah you just come here build your meter hit him around get used to how it all feels and you can access this from the very start of the game if you so choose so we just get used to hitting him we practice a few of our wire bug attacks unfortunately we can't practice the serene pose unless we come over here or any of the counters that is right we go to training option there are many things you can change about this so we hit low he brings his head down so we could practice actually hitting him in the head which does give you increased damage and we'll go over hit zones in just a minute and how to find those out direction front left have him turn around have him move wherever it is you need him to move have him follow you if you need to but we're gonna have him shoot a projectile for now so now he's going to shoot a, a glob of water at us, which is pretty helpful when trying to practice a counter, unless of course we get stuck right underneath him. Unfortunately it does have, they fixed the, the hitboxes in this game. So we could actually come to this, training options, wirebug gauge, increased all the way, which you probably don't want to do if you're learning how to weave wirebug actions into your combos. Did it take? Did. so we come here stand in front of him pop that there you go that's you practicing that and play around with this spend some time here learn what all of the wire bug actions are learn what they do and in fact we're actually gonna, gonna take a minute to go through the pause menu so we can find out what all of that is if it feels funny to have to explain a pause menu to people but monsanto it, it can it's not your average pause menu so the really valuable things you want to be looking at here is your status so for instance your health uh 130 stamina 100 it says weapon type bonus now if you don't know there's a distinction between uh melee weapons and gun or ranged weapon so you take less physical damage while using a melee weapon less elemental damage while using a, a gun or a bow come here we can see what our attack values are uh, so 75 and 20 percent that's going to be very different to what your equipment stats say also plus what skills you're running so if we come here and look at our equipment this weapon it's just showing you the non-adjusted values so it's 70 and 10 percent affinity it's it's slightly different so get used to uh to looking at this for when you're trying to work out buffs and whatnot also what's in your item pouch and what you need to craft on the fly 
Now, you come over here and you have the training options, plus the side quests that you can be looking at, how much progress you're making, and also hit R and check pending. So it'll show you a big list of the ones you've already done. Now, moving over to this one, this is what's most important, I would say. You have all of your tutorials if you need to reaccess them, but coming here to Hunter's Notes, you want to spend a lot of time looking at this. If we look at large monsters, we have the Great Azuchi, something we've already fought. It tells you how many you've hunted, what size they are, because they all come in different sizes, uh, and just a little bit about it. But if we scroll through, looking at physiology, ailments, materials, th these are what's called hit zones. So if we, we learn to read this, you'll be having a lot easier time. So, the little greatsword icon with 80 underneath it, that's cutting damage. Then you have blunt damage with the hammer next to it. Then you have gun damage, plus all elemental values. The higher the better. So for instance, to the head of a great Azuchi, we have an easier time hitting it with melee weapons than we do with anything else. And that seems pretty consistent across the board the whole way. The only real difference is, is if we're trying to hit the tail tip, we have a much easier time, well, a little bit of an easier time with blunt weapons, where if you're trying to hit the regular tail, which it's showing you where that is on the monster, uh, you have an easier time with a bladed weapon. And just looking at this, understanding how it's going to take more damage from certain elements, etc, etc, you're going to have a much easier time with the game and understanding what it is that you're going up against. Because it's a hunting game. You're trying to work out the best way that you can fight what it is that you're fighting and i feel like that's where a lot of the fun comes from then we also have ailments so three stars being most weak to poison uh one star being fairly resistant to poison uh it gives you a lot of information and it can be a bit of a daunting task to look at all of this but basically with statuses uh the first time you inflict it with the status it tends to have an easier time resisting it. Uh, Great Azuchi is sort of the practice monster, so not so much. So it's it's pretty weak to poison. Then, newly, we have the materials uh, percentages. So this is going to tell you pretty much in an Excel spreadsheet what you can get by doing what. So just for hunting and killing a Great Azuchi, or finishing a quest rather, that's target rewards. You have a 21% chance of getting a Great Azuchi hide within those rewards, and you get multiple. Capturing it, you get a 26% chance of getting one as a capture bonus. For breaking individual parts on it, which like we were talking about before with the tail, uh, you have a 20% chance of getting a hide, and you have a 43% chance. So when you do those cards at the end, when you have those three, 43% chance is it's going to be one of these hides and also it appears in those little shiny things we were picking up before uh these are fairly easy to read i feel but for instance uh this tells me that if i want a great azuchi tail i'm gonna want to break the tail like i did because that gives me an 80 percent chance of getting one and th this will appear for every single monster then we come to small monsters not only do you get cute little pictures but it's going to tell you where these guys appear in their known habitats because you're going to want some of these materials from time to time so we've only been to the shrine ruins but it tells us where they come we also have one of these as well so these small monsters kind of have some unique materials that you might want to stumble into from time to time like sharp claws uh they're shared across these things then we're going to come to endemic life these just tell you about spirit birds and where they appear and what they're good for, really. Then we have the notebook. You remember that relic record we picked up earlier? There's 10 in every location. So if we get these, uh, it tells us a little story. Then we have the basic controls. Like, this will tell you pretty much everything you need to know about the controls. Which, if you've made it this far, then you already know. But the weapon controls. So this tells you pretty much every basic little thing about your weapon plus a few of the little nuances so we come down to longsword it explains the spirit gauge to us uh it tells us that uh, we can do a combo mid 
Uh, sorry, we can do an attack mid combo, which is a counter, which is four side slash. Uh, if we scroll over to the right, it tells us more about that special sheath and the EI slash. It, it is quite a complex weapon. Uh, it would be worth watching a proper weapon guide if you want to really get into it, or just playing around, reading this and, and learning. And these are your wire bug attacks. Uh, so Saw and Kick and Serene Pose tells you their cost, tells you what they do. And it, you're going to be able to find these for every single weapon. All of the base ones. So it tells you exactly what you need to know about pretty well everything. Also, if you've been taking a whole bunch of photos, like our Thirst Trap friend, uh, you got your pictures here and a big manual about this is basically your basic controls again. We come over here. This is your multiplayer menu. You want to check who's in your lobby. Check your playlist. If you want to do poses for taking cool pictures with your friends, you can do these. Your uh, Palicos and Palamutes also participate. And then you have your guild cards, which you can send and receive from other players. So if you look at this, it gives you just fun information, really. So you can look at what weapon you have equipped, how many you've done. It tells you how many quests you've done by weapon. It tells you something about your buddy, awards that you unlocked, arena records, your hunting log. And you can edit this just by hitting edit. Send them to other players, receive them from other players. And that's all there is to really say about that. And on to the final thing that we're going to talk about for today is just a quick, nice, easy walk around the gathering hub. So, we're going to fast travel out of here by holding minus. Come on down to the gathering hub. And now we're here, where all the multiplayer magic is going to happen. This effectively has everything that was in Kamara Village. Uh, just condensed into one little area. So you don't ever have to leave this and run around. But you can if you want. Uh, even while there's multiple people in your location. So... You have your May uh, Merchant here, uh, sells exactly what Kagero has, uh, you've got the, the quest counter, you can eat uh, at a canteen here, or you can eat outside if you're so inclined. Uh, we're going to come back to Itsushi just for one final thing in a sec, but if you come up these stairs and into here, you also have a combination of your room and uh, the... The blacksmith so talk to this dude you can make extra weapons and armor here one final important tip is if we talk to our housekeeper and get used to talking to our housekeeper he gains more functionality as the game goes on so if you don't want to go back to the buddy plaza to uh, do things on the ship to get more honey you can just talk to this guy if you don't want to worry too much about going back there for the buddy dojo, you can just talk to this guy. And he unlocks a whole bunch of stuff just for you later on. The last thing that you can do here is you can talk to Master Itsushi to do what's called arena quests. They are quests that give you set weapons and armor to do. And it's kind of like a time attack. They're really fun. But they are always scaled up for two players. And also in this hub, when you're doing these quests here which I won't show you for fear of spoilers. Uh, they are a little bit harder here, but they scale depending on how many people you have in your uh, in your hub. So if you do it by yourself, they have less health. But if you do it with four people, then they have the max amount of health that they're going to have. And I think that's going to wrap up uh, this guide pretty nicely. I've been Val. Uh, if you want to follow me, I tend to post to Twitter, I have Twitch, which I'll link down below, put all my links down below. Uh, if you liked this guide, let me know if you want me to do more or you need anything else, uh, feel free to comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. We also have a Discord in which I'm happy to answer questions there, but you can come bug me while I'm streaming even. And I'm going to be doing a Sword and Shield tutorial in that training area uh, a little bit later this week. So, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope you have a good time with it. Hope you enjoy Monster Hunter Rise. And uh, happy hunting. Thank you so much.